Put your hands together for Desmond Michael Connor on another grand occasion in a life that's filled with honours. Is 84 his number of years? Or is it the tries he set up in tests? Or is it the sum of his opponent's fears when they realised he really was the best? He waltzed into the Aussie team. His diving passes graced the pitch. He put together a dozen tests, then did the same across the ditch. Twelve more tests with one soul lost as halfback for the mighty blacks, leaving us to count the cost and deep regret that he had not come back. Then, suddenly, they made him coach of a team of striplings just beginning. Wanting him for a new approach, they hoped would see these young men winning. Missing from the Australian lineup are Ken Catchpole, John Brass and Tony Abrahams, injured in the first test, but maybe the Wallaby mascot will bring the home team a share of luck. Playing in his 15th test, Laidlaw is the most experienced of New Zealand's backs, but appearing in his 44th international, Pine Tree Cole Meads has the distinction of being the most capped player on the field. And following tradition, the All Blacks perform the Harker prior to the game beginning. The Gills kick off, New Zealand fine touch close to halfway where a line out will form. Employing only two men in the line out, Australia win the ball, but Hipwell is quickly closed upon by the All Black forwards, and from the game's first ruck, New Zealand are awarded a penalty. Australia charge through. Strong's tap to Laidlaw rolls loose, and gathering the ball on the blind, Hipwell goes over in the corner for the opening try. After 15 minutes, Australia leads 6 3. Australia persevere with the minimum number in the lineouts, but New Zealand are hammering through with Meads in the vanguard, and McGill is frequently under pressure. Through Cole, Australia attempt a counter attack, but Smith is harassed by Thorn. Hipwell tries to recover possession, but is leapt upon by Steele as the winger is unable to clear him. Using their speed, Australia spin the ball along the back line, and when Cardi beats Lister, he threatens danger, but is taken by McCormick. Taylor knocks on, and a great scoring chance is lost. A nicely timed pass from Johnson sends Hipwell away on the blind. On to Cole, who in passes to Ballasty. A short punt, and the 5-8 follows on, regathering deep in opposition territory. Ballasty darts back into position, and from the ruck, Australia receives its tenth penalty. On the resumption, Australia attempt to open up the game. They have an overlap as the ball reaches Smith, but he kicks ahead. McCormick gathers to drive play back into the Wallabies' half. Varying the length of the lineouts, Australia prevent their opposition acquiring quick possession from set play. Against the Blacks and the men of, from Wales, and afterwards against the box. And so, in order not to fail, his tactics were inclined to shock. A shortened line-out was one such play, ploy, followed up by a six-man scrum. The latter really did annoy the media, but they were dumb. And the NZ press began to whine as Davis floated in defence. There were those that shouted, body line! There were those that thought it all made sense. And Catchpole left in agony, pulled apart by unthinking Meads. That afternoon on the SCG, when Hipwell answered his country's need. Gives the opportunities for controlled kicking, and the Tigerish Wallabies tear through after the ball to continually harass the New Zealand three quarters. Each side is now more inclined to run the ball, and Australia's backs are constructive in attack but Kirkpatrick covers the fact. The Wallabies are anxious to run the ball, and Cole comes into the line searching for the overlap. Cardi fails to take the pass, but kicks through and McCormick gathers. 
He and Carty engage in a wild exchange as tension brings tempers to boiling point. Reaches a high pitch as the All Blacks, unbeaten since 1965, make a thrilling bid to keep their record intact. With the Australians hurling themselves into tackles, the ball sweeps across the back line. Exploding into the attack, McCormick sets up the overlap and outmanoeuvring Cardi, Thorne flashes over in the corner for the Tourers' second try in the 62nd minute. Surging into New Zealand territory, the Australians unleash a strong attack as McGill splits the defence. A high punt forces the All Blacks to turn and chase as Australia's forwards pour through. McCormick just beats Davis to the ball behind the New Zealand goal. It's 18 to 14. There's just over five minutes remaining and New Zealand need a converted try for victory. But Australia are prepared to play themselves into the ground to achieve their first test win at home against the All Blacks in 34 years. Overlap. But, Steel is but in All Blacks' mind, the doubt was sown. For the second the test, our hopes were high. Only to have them finally blown by an incomprehensible penalty try. But McLeod wins the vital tight head and New Zealand's back storm through. Cottrell to Davis who tries a kick ahead as he's swooped upon by Honan. Flashing to the corner, Pope forces the ball. But Mr Crow awards New Zealand a penalty try under the posts. Here's a repeat of the try. conversion for McCormick and the All Blacks take the lead 19 to 18. Australia's coach Des Connor, reserve Jules Gerasimov and injured Phil Smith appear stunned by the dramatic turn of events and the slow motion camera allows a close study of every phase of what is certain to prove one of the most discussed decisions in modern day rugby. Here in stop motion is the incident that brought about the penalty try. Although beaten, the Wallabies' performance ranks with the greatest efforts ever produced by an Australian 15. They prove worthy challengers to rugby's undisputed world champions, the New Zealand All Blacks. Then, in 69, a Welsh team of promise with Boyo Merv and JPR and Barry John and Delmi Thomas with Gareth Edwards, another star. From the kickoff, all went fine. We had the fiery dragon slaughtered. We were still the favourites at half-time, only to fall to the Welsh three-quarters. Straight to the plane after post-match showers, off to face the Springbok guns. Jan Smuts Airport in 18 hours. Varenahan, the first of our Connor runs. The first provincial games were easy. We almost seemed to win at will. The Joburg test wasn't quite so breezy. The press put our future chances at nil. But under Dez we battled on. The Wednesday games were mostly won. In none of the tests were we ever done. And a magic win might easily have been spun. So now we gather round Des Connor, a modest man. Hurrah! Hooray! A humble man who does us honour by his presence on this day. Probably the first game that I played against Queens, played for Queensland against New South Wales and, and I, I, I don't remember much about it, I was so bloody frightened, it didn't matter, but um, probably that and I played against the great Cyril Burke who was a legend of halfback in those days and uh, I'm, I'm sorry to say he ran, ran rings around me but uh, no, it was a great introduction. I, I played for the Wallabies and, um, and then I went to teaching in I was a school teacher and I went to Auckland in New Zealand to, 
to um, teach at a grammar school there and um, the qualification in those days was you had to live in the country for a month and you had to play for a provincial side. So in 1961 the French came to New Zealand and I'd been there for a year and played for Auckland and so I was eligible for selection so um, they picked me. Oh, it's great to see the game it's healthy and um, is, is going and continuing down that path. No, it's great. Yeah, no, it's a great honour and uh, I deeply appreciate it. At this stage of my life, yeah, it's, a, it's a wonderful. Thank you very much. Thanks for the memories, Des.